Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons365.com and I have got a wonderful song from the 80s. Def Leppard, one of my favorite, all time favorite rock bands. Just love Def Leppard. Um, it's got so many great songs and this is one of them. We're gonna learn how to play Hysteria. Uh, and this is a song that's been requested over the years quite a bit. I always kind of stay away from it though because it just has so much going on. And if you know Def Leppard's music, especially as their career kind of progressed, Man, Mutt Lang, as their production values on their songs are is incredible, but it's really hard to get all those layers and make it sound, you know, like they do. So, um, so I avoided it for a while. So now I'm going to dive in and uh, do my best. All right, so we are in standard tuning. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell and you know when I release a new video. Um, and check out my Guitar Academy. It's at guitarlessons365.com. Has all my guitar courses. Uh, we have a lot of cool stuff there, a new web app over there that kind of complements all the courses and give you some cool quizzes and ear training, improvisation, uh, guitar tone, technique, you know it, uh, you name it, it's all there. All right, so let's get into this track real quick. All right, so I've got kind of a clean guitar tone with a lot of chorus on it and some reverb. Um, so I can really get this kind of that really sparkly sound. And this main riff that starts it has a couple different ways that it's played throughout the song. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you those two different ways. But the first way that you're going to hear it played is like this. Such a great little guitar riff, uh, but pretty simple to play though. So we're gonna start here. Now, I'm, however you wanna finger it, I like playing it like this. Um, it really doesn't really matter. Whatever way is comfortable for you. So we had the fifth fret on the A string, and then the fourth fret on the D, and then back to that fifth fret on the A. Now, you can, you'll notice, especially on the, the bass strings, it's kind of, you're gonna, it's really kind of slightly palm muted to make the notes pop out a little bit. And so they don't ring too loud over everything. So we have this. So then we have the open G string. So we have this. So we have those first three notes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick across the G, the open G, the D string, and then the A string a few times. So we have, we have this. And then that last time, that, so we basically picked from the G down to the A three times in a row. And then that last time, you're going to hit the um, A string twice. So we have this. All right, now we're going to now add the third fret there on the low E string. And the feel of the picking pattern is going to change a little bit. We're going to Let's keep these two notes there. So whatever fingers, you want to use these fingers, these fingers, these fingers, doesn't matter. Um, then we have the uh, third fret there on the low E added. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to pick across. Pretty simple. We're just going to start from the sixth string, fifth, fourth, then go back starting on the third, third, fourth, fifth. So it's a little six note pattern. Repeat it. So we have this so far. All right, and now I'm going to take it to an E minor add nine chord. And we're just going to pick, we'll do the same picking. So that's an open E string, second fret on the A, fourth fret on the D, the open G. And we're going to do the same pattern we just did here. Just do it on this chord. All right. So there's a little pause on that G. And then we're going to go back to the chord we just came from. Remember, you can play, uh, sometimes when I come in back up, I like to play it with these fingers. I don't know why. 
gonna do that same picking pattern once this time instead of twice. So we have this. And then we're gonna end it with kind of the same way we started it. All right, so that the very first little bit that we started with is also the end of it. So all together. All right, so we have that and that's kind of the uh, the main thing that's going on in the beginning of the song, that riff kind of repeats. And we have on a, with a bigger guitar tone, we have some more stuff coming in here. Um, so let me just go to that real quick, uh, kind of switch this settings on you. When they, go, when they go to some distortion, they use a lot of, just a lot of gain. So, um, so anyway, we're gonna do this. And when it first comes in, we're gonna have this. And then it switches to this. So really cool type of little ricks. And this are these tiny little layers that always kind of go around everywhere. It's just really, really cool. All right, so let's uh, take a look at what I just did. So we have, we're gonna start out with some harmonics. No, so this is the, it's going over that intro clean guitar riff we just learned. So these are the harmonics. At the fifth fret, I'll cross the G, B, and the high E. So you play that and a little bit of vibrato, and then you kick in the gain. And then we have this. So that's kind of like a kind of a slow bar, kind of a, actually a quick little, you're gonna depress the bar a little bit before you play this seventh fret on the low E. And when you pick it, just release the bar. And then you're gonna hit some harmonics. The harmonics are at the D and the, on the D and G string at the seventh fret. Hit them a couple times and do that again. And then this little picking lick that ends it. That leads to the vocals. So that part right there, I'll turn the delays off if you want. So we have the second fret there on the um, G string. So we play that and then we go to the fifth fret there on the B. So just play between those two notes twice. Then down to the third fret on the B. And then back to the second fret on the G. And then back to the third fret on the B. So that's the lick. And then do that again. And then it comes back in with um, the, the verse. Now, let's talk about the verse real quick. Once again, there's a couple of guitar parts going here, especially as we get into the verse a little bit. Let me switch back to the clean setting here. So we have this, um, the same part we just did. You cannot, you cannot feel. Now it does this version of it of, of the riff that we did in the intro, until we start having the, the bigger guitar comes in and follows it, the kind of the more distorted guitar. And when it goes to that, the pattern changes a little bit in the left hand. Uh, I'm not sorry, left hand, in the picking hand. So the chords will stay the same. But we don't do that little. We don't do that, that little intro, instead, It's that kind of thing going on. So let me show you. So it's the same notes in the left hand, but we're gonna pick A, D, A, and then it's the same timing as before. 
So it's kind of like that pause on the G. Because it's kind of really laying out those notes and letting them breathe. So we have the G, D, A. So we have this. That's opposed to what we did earlier. So we have this. And then do that again. So the second time around, it starts. So the first time we hit, it started on the A string. A, D, A, then this pick across. Hold that. And then we now start on the D. D, A, and then that same pick across. So all together. Now the rest of the picking of the chords is the same as the first way we played it. And then we'll end it the same way that we did before as well during the intro. Now what's going on over that? We have a little bit of a electric guitar riff that goes on with it. So let me switch back to distortion tone and I'll sh show you what that sounds like. All right, so pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna start, this is just kind of single note stuff. You really, you don't want them bleeding together too much. It's just kind of going along with the lower, the clean guitar parts. We have this, the fifth fret on the A, then the fourth fret on the D, and then back to the fifth fret on the A. Then go five, four on the D, then over to the fifth fret on the A. So we have this. And then when we start over, since we're already playing the D, we'll just start at the fourth fret. So all together. Then down to the, along with the uh, the third fret here on the low E. So we're gonna we're gonna play that. Then the fifth fret on the A. Then four, five, four on the D. Back to that five on the A. So you're gonna repeat that. All right, and now this one down here with the E. So that's gonna be open E, second fret on the A, four, five, four again on the D, and then second fret there on the A. So just do that once, and then the same pattern that we just played at, off the G. So, so far, we have this. And then we're going to end it like this. So that's just that five, four, five there. Five on the A string, that is, four on the D. And then you're gonna play five, four on the D to the five on the A three times. Remember that last time? Make that D, uh, that D note twice. All right, so we have that going on there, and then we get to the pre-chorus. All right, so switch back, and we have this. That takes us to the chorus, which has two separate guitar parts too. So we have this. It starts with a D chord, then it goes to a D sus four chord, and all that means is 
Now I'll play the third fret there on that D on the high E string. And then we're gonna take it, this is really cool. So we have this, that chorus really kind of helps bring all this out, give it the atmosphere that it needs. Uh, it's a third fret on the A, open D, open G, third fret on the B, and the open high E. So we have this. And then you're gonna pick across the top three strings. High E, E, G. You might wanna do a little bar after that. So we have this. Then we do the same thing again, pretty much. That D to the D sus four. But now the next chord is basically instead of the third fret on the A, it's the second fret on the A. Everything else is the same. And then once again, you're gonna pick across the top three strings. So we have this. Now we play it back the first way we did it. To the C there. And then we have this little. So we're gonna basically do a down, up, down on that chord we just played. Just you let it in the ring and then just do a down, up, down on it. And what it does now is you're gonna go to this uh, G major and first inversion. So that's the second fret there on the A, open D, open G, and you're gonna still play in the third fret there on the B string, but you're gonna add the third fret on the high E. And then resolve that to a D major chord. So we have this. And then it just kind of strums that D a couple times, leading to the chorus. Now the chorus, we're back on the distortion tone, and it's got, it's pretty cool because it sets so much like distortion and delay on it that just single notes just really ring out well. So it's kind of like this, the bottom line to it at least. <laughs> So now I'll turn a delay off for you. It's just a low E string open. And then the third fret on the A string, I kind of do a little bar, you know, kind of do the same thing we did before, just kind of depress it a little bit. And then as you play the note, just let the bar up. To the D chord. Now this is a D power chord. You can play a full D major or whatever. After a couple of times of that, it goes to this. So that's an E minor chord off of the uh, second fret there on the D, open G and the B. Those three strings, and then you're gonna just now add the first fret there on the B to make it a C major, and then to a D major. Dip into it. All right, so that's the lower part in the uh, in the chorus. Above that, we have this. So uh, this would be Steve Clark's part. So we have this. So that's gonna have seventh fret there, really heavily palm muted, uh, at least on the these two strings. Um, and the seventh fret there on the G string, over to the fourth fret on the B, and back to the seventh fret there on the G. And then from there we kind of repeat this same thing. We go. Uh, this lick at least, 10th fret on the high E, 
7 on the G, G string, 8 on the B, back to 7 on the G. So we have this. So we start out with these three notes. And then from there, we do this four note lick repeated. You basically do it three times. And then you start everything over. So we have this. Repeat. All right, so now at the very end when we're doing this. In the lower line, we have this. Now I will say that this part is really, really hard to hear in the mix. So it's kind of like, I'm kind of getting this section of it, just kind of like checking out some of what he's doing live there. Um, uh, because it's just really, really hard to pick up. It's just so much going on. They really kind of buried this ending of this lick. So we had this. So we had this first chord. And then he joins them on the D. So we have this seven on the G, eight on the B, back to seven on the G. And then 9, 7, 9, 7 on the G. Do that off of over both chords, and then down to that D chord. Play full D or just D power chord. And then we go back to um, the, basically the, the transition riff, which is uh, um, kind of the second variation that we did, the, the variation that we did on the main note. A little transition before the vocals come back in. Now over that we have this really cool. So we have we're doing this slow version. That version of the verse riff, um, and over that, man, I feel like I'm getting a workout just with these pedals. So we have we're gonna switch to the neck pickup here, and over that we have this. So that's just the 10th fret there on the B. And then bend it up. All right, so the second verse comes and there's more guitar layers. We're not gonna cover all that stuff because that's just like, you know, a lot of studio effects that I'm not even attempt. Um, goes through the same, but it's the same verse structure, the same thing with the, the, the two guitar lines. So you can just do it the same way we did in the first verse. Pre-chorus, same. Chorus, same. And then we get to the solo. Um, now the solo rhythm um, kind of starts out with a couple of chord stabs and then it goes into a full rhythm. So I'll play that part for you first. Uh, there's a little, little section that um, kind of starts the solo section, I guess. But So these first two chord stabs are part of that. So it looks like this. So pretty simple stuff. We're gonna start with this, this A power chord a couple times. And then it goes into the So that's just kind of like you can do it the second fret on the D string or the seventh fret on the A. Either way, you just hit it, do a little bar dive, and then go down to the A power chord and start playing just kind of a simple rhythm. And then take it to a D power chord. And at the end of it, there's a bend off the C, which is the third fret of the A string. Thank you. 
At the very end of it, just goes into that pre-chorus again. So it's just the same chords as before. All right, so now let me actually play the solo that happens over that. We have um, these little, over those, we have these little quick little bends that happen over that, and then I'll go into the solo. So we have this. I swear these solos are just like compositions. They're really good. So in in there, there's some like uh, not really har some little bit of harmony work, a little bit of just playing an octave lower as well. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of do that what I showed you. You know, I say if you have a guitar player doing that rhythm underneath you, and you can just do this, which is pretty much the main line of the solo. So uh, without getting too involved in it. So we have fifth fret. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, these are... We have this right here, which, over that first A hit, we have this, which is a unison bend. Take the delay off, worry. So that's the second, playing the 12th fret on the high E string, and then you're gonna bend up the 15th fret on the B, so they match. Okay, you're gonna have that, that's the first one that happens over the first A hit. And off the second A hit, we have that same kind of thing, except this time, it doesn't do a full unison bend. We're playing the 10th fret there on the high E string, but we're still doing the, we're gonna play the 13th fret on the B and you're gonna bend that up a half set. And it actually is a, ends up being a C sharp and a D together. That's how it gets that quick little dissonant sound. So, it's like, so we have this full unison bend, and then uh, really, um, not unison. Kind of a, a minor second apart. And then, if you want to do the, the little bar dive, you can do that, or it doesn't matter which guitarist does that. And then we get to the solo. The fifth fret there on the B string. And then, slide up to seven. And then go over. Over to the seventh fret there on the high E string, hit it a few times. Slide up to nine, and then hit nine and slide up to fourteen. So this. Then you're gonna jump back to the seventh fret there on the high E string and play seven. Slide back down, slide up to nine, and then back down to seven. So so far we have this. All right, then you're gonna jump back here to the fifth fret on the B string. Fifth fret on the B, roll over to the fifth fret on the high E string, seven, nine. So roll the fives, then play seven, nine. Then back to that five. And then back to this nine. And then over to the 10th fret there on the B string. And then we're gonna end that phrase. Let's get a little, some uh, double stops. Which is the 10th fret and the B and the high E together. Slide up to 12 and back down to 10. So, so far we have this. From there we have this. So that's I'm gonna pick this um, uh, the ninth fret there on the G string a couple times. 
over to the 10 on the high E, and then back to that ninth fret of the G a couple times. Then that ninth fret, so we have 10 down to nine on the high E. And then back to the ninth fret of the G. And then slide to that 14th fret again there on the high E. So it is. From there, we had this. So that's a 12th fret there on the B string. Slide up to 14, back down to 12, back up, back down. Then you're gonna go over here to the fifth fret on the high E. Slide to 12. I'll play nine, and then over to 10 on the B. So with this. All right, now from there we have this. So we're gonna play these little groups of three to play 10th fret there on the B, shift up to this 12th fret, and then hammer on 14. So that's on the B string. Then you're gonna kinda do the same thing here. The next three notes gonna be nine on the high E, shift up to 10th fret, and then hammer 12. And then that same kind of thing, pick 10 on the high E, shift up to 12, and hammer 14. And there's a slight little pause in it, and then we just go to end the solo, which is this 14, 15 on the high E, into that bend at the 15th fret on the B string. So whole solo with delay. So then it goes back through the, um, the same kind of um, solo, I mean, pre-chorus, and then we get to the, the same chorus, and then we get the outro section, which is just kind of the uh, kind of uh, simplified version of the clean picking part. So it's just kind of doing this. So it's gonna start just with that, the first way we played the, that riff, where it's kind of picking across the strings quicker. Then down to the G version. And then it goes back to the D one without going down to E. And it just kind of hangs out the rest of the song on D. And you're gonna have uh, as well that, another guitar layer on top of that. Kind of have some of that going on a little bit later, uh, which is just that D sus four chord and going down to that resolve to the D. So with, the, with that going on, and then there's a really cool atmospheric guitar melody that I'm going to end it with here, um, uh, which looks like this. I'm up on the neck pickup here. Gonna kind of repeat that. So it's just that 10th fret on the B string again, we did that earlier, and then a the big bend. And then seven, slide down to five, and back up to seven. So this is all in the B string. Then play three, five, and then it sounds like. 
kind of kind of grabs a seven real quick, or you can just straight down to the three. I think you might do both. Uh, so it's kind of a. So, it's a lot of going on in the song, even though it's nothing's very hard to play. It's just all really cool production and layering, and it just creates this really atmospheric sound. It's really cool. Some really great guitar uh, riffs in there as well. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.